right, this is camping stuff update. I, I don't know why I'm packing so much. Is this the soft stuff? Sleeping bag, jacket, clothing. I'm going for five days, technically four and a half. Probably don't need to change your clothes for every day, but still. Food in the pink bucket, toiletries in this bag. Don't know how it became so much. Entertainment bucket, books, BS. I mean, not BS, a switch and oh, and a sweater. Pack in my cold foods right now, and then I'm ready to head out. And then this is my little camp buddy. Got this for my birthday. It's a, it's a fox, so it's coming with me to go camping. I haven't named it yet, but it's very cute. <laughs> this is one of my favorite parts of packing for camping car Tetris. I scoot the chair up. Oh boy. Oh, car. Car Tetris. Car Tetris. Seriously, wait. How? How? How do I pack all the stuff in the car? I don't know why that box is so big. I don't even eat that much food in five days. I'll have to reevaluate this after I finish coming back from this trip to see how much I actually need in five days. Back seats. Getting full there. The trunk. Now it's trunk Tetris. How does this happen every time I go on a trip? Seriously. I have mean, no way I need all of this. All of this. So yeah, going on a trip to Barton Flats. It's uh, a campsite in the San Bernardino Mountain. It's only about hour 45 minutes, hour two hours tops of their traffic drive from Orange County. It's not that far. It's a high elevation though, so apparently it is gonna snow on Saturday and Sunday. I made preparations for camping in snow. Probably when I'm pitching the tent, it won't be snowing, but when I'm breaking down camp, it probably will be snowing. Head northeast toward Walnut Avenue. Okay, so I am at the Barton Flats campsite. Uh, it was a little bit weird. There were two very nice people here earlier. I guess the, the sign for my campsite said that it was open, so what you do with the open ones, apparently you just show up and set up camp. That was kind of awkward because like the campsite is basically deserted except for a couple of people and I had to make a move. Oh, I see them driving around back to go to the other campsite that they moved their stuff to. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I showed them my reservation on the phone. They were very, very nice about it. So they moved to another campsite. But finally here, it's a little after three o'clock and the sun's setting and looks like a pretty decent campsite here, I'll show you. So this is site 28. There's a fire pit that's closed right now. I think I'll probably pitch tent under that tree better generally for hanging out so yeah i'm gonna go start setting stuff up okay i just have to say look at the size of these pine cones every time i'm actually not sure if the yeti and my food container will both fit in here we'll see oh thank goodness i think it will fit do if we're gonna hang stuff up to prevent getting snowed on and I'm actually not sure. <laughs> Maybe around these three trees instead of the other tree. Set that up. Alright so I'm here in Barton Flats. Um, right now it's pretty, like I said it's pretty empty. There's maybe like five people camping here that I've seen in this entire loop, maybe six, including the couple that had the very bad fortune of picking the, picking the site that I picked, <laughs> even though like all these are empty, so they had to move, but I see they've set up camp already. Um, so yeah, there's, there's my car over there. This is the bathroom. Uh, that's also where the showers would have been uh they are still there but the doors are locked because the showers are closed because of covid and then here's the oh 
pretty nice looking water spigot. There's like not that many people around, which is kind of nice because it's really quiet. Not a lot of stuff to do because the sun's going to set real soon. So today really was just set up camp day. And I, I don't remember if I bought the book for the sites, but it looks like I have internet access. So I'm just going to try to Google some stuff to do. It looks like I picked a pretty good site. Uh, so you see there's, I set up the tent. It's pretty warm right now. When I was at the foothills, it was 90 something degrees. And then when I got here, I think it's like maybe high 60s, low 70s. I'm just a little bit sweaty right now because I've been like doing all the setup. So yeah, apparently it's supposed to get down really low. I've got all my jackets ready. I currently, uh, yeah, it's very quiet. I'm going to keep setting up. Looks like I maybe have another 50 minutes of decent sun before it starts getting darker and darker. But... So I'm going to set the rest of the big items up, the biggest things up, so mostly tents. So I'm just getting stuff out of the car. And then I think I'm just going to sit down and relax and cook dinner. I'm just going to take a little break. The camp host came by, or the substitute for the camp host came by. And he had like some work to do in the morning, and that's why he wasn't able to stop by earlier to flip the sign. Hence, somebody else tried to take the site because they thought it was open. I mean, it's a really nice site. Like, I'm looking around like this is the nicest one on this side of the loop. So I think that's why they picked this one. I'm all checked in. They took my address down for the, the check-in process. And yeah, I'm just sitting here in my tent, hanging out for a bit. Probably should get off the mattress and inflate it and deal with the gear. Because right now, right now, this is what the gear looks like. It's just gear pile. That's what happens when you overpack. And there's my fox friend that I still haven't named. I kind of have a headache though, but I think that was because I didn't really sleep very well last night. Because thanks election uh, that I'm trying to get away from. It's actually my 40th birthday. Wow, it feels weird saying it. I don't feel 40. I mean, I, I didn't really feel 30. It still feels the same. So, so happy birthday to me. I'm 40 this year. I forgot to bring a brownie or like a baked treat. I think the post, the post office slash grocery shop is like six miles down the road. So I might go there and see if I just get like a hostess cupcake or something. <laughs> so yeah, I wanted to get, go on a camping trip. The hence the last minute, last month I decided, hey, let's go on a camping trip. And this was kind of the last closest feasible place that I could go to, you know, for like a quick five day getaway. Because originally, wow. originally I, I took the days off for my birthday. I didn't really have anything planned. I was just going to like relax, maybe stay home and play some video games. But you know, staying home and playing video games was like the last six months of existence. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, I wanted to do something else. I wanted to go on a camping trip. And, you know, it was kind of a weird time to go camping because it's early. No, this is late fall. The late fall. Um, this is, I think, the last weekend of the season, really. So I think the, the season closes at the end of next Friday for the campsite and then the campsite's just done. Now that I'm looking at the inside, I see all the little straps that holds the rain fly onto the tent. I missed about four of them. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to undo the whole thing just to fix it, so I think I'm good. I'll just, I'll just remember for next time there's eight of them instead of four. Okay, so now that the sun is setting, because it's almost five o'clock, it is definitely getting cooler, uh, noticeably cooler, so I've I've readied my jacket and my gloves. Also, we've discovered this desk, this uh, picnic table is made for giants. Cause look at the tabletop is at my chest. So this should make dinner eating interesting. I, I need a booster seat. <laughs> booster seat for this table. This picnic table is not made for people who are 5'3". I'm gonna go see if that general store is open and see if I can get like a pack of ice plus some dessert. Okay, I'm gonna go. All right, set up some lighting at the campsite. So that's the picnic table, plus my chair. There's my tent. All right, it is dinner time on my solo camping trip. I am having chili mac from Pro Pack. This is one of their single serving, actually maybe it's two servings, but it's 570 calories for the entire thing of a bobber which is excellent. Uh, let's see if it tastes like anything. That's been kind of the problem with some of these is they kind of taste like nothing. I just got some stuff on my hand. Let me get some paper towels. So yeah, it is so dark and so quiet. I think my nearest neighbor is like that way by a good football field, maybe. And then over there, I, mean, I can't. The only lights I see are for the bathrooms. 
and the lights I put up. It is, it is dark. I, I kind of get what people are talking about when they're saying you kind of worried a little bit more in the dark. I'm not scared because I don't think anything's going to happen, but it's just really quiet and dark. I'm used to quiet. Not quite used to dark and quiet, I guess. That's fine. Okay, so this is Chili Mac. Actually, it's kind of hard to hold on this thing. Maybe I'll force them out and eat it. I don't really want to make more of a mess, but it's kind of hard to eat in the bag. Okay, so far it actually looks like chili. Maybe a little bit more liquidy than I thought, but... Oh, oh it's hot. It's hot in the titanium bowl. I need a piece of it. So, looks kind of like... Looks like chili mac. Let's see if it tastes like chili mac. Okay, this is actually really good. So, note to self eat, get more of these. It actually tastes like chili. It actually has the consistency of chili, which I'm shocked about because this was like freeze dry brittle. Like it's actually very light. And then when I rehydrated it, it actually tastes like somebody just made this. Mm. Obviously not gourmet, but... And you're paying for the fact that it's been processed to be really light. Because it's like $8, $10 for a bag of these. It's really good. I like, did get an entire thing of baguette. Don't judge me. I was at um, Amazon Fresh and somebody said the French baguette's really good. So... 89 cent I got one bag it's okay but I like bread with chili let's dip it in there mm. this was a good choice for dinner would buy again all right so I am it's not even that late I think it's like 8 30 yeah it's late 8.30 right now, and I'm already bundled up in my, my sleeping bag. It's kind of weird, but I can kind of feel the floor is cold, too. I guess this is weird. And then I've got um, another blanket plus a jacket over my feet just to keep my feet warm. Everything's pretty toasty except for my feet. My hands were kind of cold before, but they warmed up. This is currently 46 degrees, so I don't know what it's going to feel like in two days when it's like 21 degrees. Hopefully it doesn't get to the point where I have to sleep in my car. <laughs> That'd be really weird. I went to look at the stars a little bit. Sunset really early, so it got dark. You know, so it feels also the time change from the weekend. So I think that's why I'm kind of tired already. Maybe also the altitude. Maybe the sleep I lost yesterday. Who knows? So I'm gonna turn in early in my tent. All right. Good night. <laughs> Okay, so it is now 2.15 in the morning. Um, went to bed really early. Like I had, I was already bundled and fell asleep. I don't know when I fell asleep, but I had a little bit of trouble falling asleep. But I, I bundled up to go to bed at around 8.30. And um, it was, my feet were cold at the beginning and I was like, weirdly bundled up in the sleeping bag i think i just still need to get used to sleeping in a sleeping bag because it's the restrictive not that i move a lot it's just it's different and the material's different and i think i've gotten used to sleeping with a weighted blanket so had a little bit of trouble falling asleep and i had a headache which um i think it was just lack of sleep plus altitude potentially because i am over six thousand feet right now at this campsite and last time I spent the night at a campsite this high. I threw up the first night. <laughs> I was like really thirsty. Luckily, I made myself a container of tea during dinner that I'm still drinking right now. I had a headache and, and it was kind of like my feet were cold and my hand were cold. And then I woke up probably like half an hour ago. And um, yeah, I had to, had to go pee. The headache's gone, so that's good. Um, but I was thirsty had to pee and hungry and i'm i'm thinking that's probably because of the altitude because i had a plenty calorie filled dinner i think the um the altitude 
is kind of more taxing on my body and I was going to maybe just need more water and more food. So woke up bundled up in my giant fuzzy jacket, <laughs> sat out for a bit. The moon is actually really bright. Um, so the, the moonrise is probably uh, almost at the peak right now. So it was really bright outside. That was kind of nice because yeah, otherwise it's been a very dark and quiet campsite because no one can have campfires. And once again, my nearest neighbor is at least a football field away. Yeah, so then I uh, went to the restroom and then got a snack from the food locker, ate it outside because it was really nice outside and I was pretty warm in my jacket. So, you know, got like uh, one of the snacks I was going to use for the hike. But obviously, I, I think due to the bad weather on Saturday, I'm probably not going to go on three separate hikes. So I, I had some snacks from that, had some crackers and had some water. And I, I am feeling better <laughs> now that I've eaten and uh, drank more water. So I think maybe that was it, and that was the reason. Because I usually don't wake up at two in the morning, at one thirty in the morning, to eat a snack. That's very unusual. <laughs> yeah, I will probably roll back into bed. But yeah, the the sleeping bag is actually doing its job quite well. It's actually too warm <laughs> under there, so I gotta figure something out. Um, although it might be uh, of great value, the warmth factor, when it comes time to Saturday and uh, Friday night and Saturday night when it will be much colder because the um, weather is trending colder, there's a storm moving in. But yeah, I'm going uh, to roll back into bed and then wake up in the morning and I'll decide what to do then. Okay, it's 8 in the morning, Thursday, second day of the trip, and I... I um, wasn't feeling that well when I went to bed, like had this headache, woke up middle of the night, was thirsty, hungry, but the headache was gone. So like ate a snack. That was really interesting. <laughs> You're feeling better. Like everything is a little bit dry, but I think that's the altitude again. Um, so I'm going to go put on some lotion. I'm going to drink some more liquids and start making breakfast and the uh, checking out the guide and deciding where to go for today. I also want to show you my buddy in the tent. One second. Turn this. Look, it's my tent buddy. Still haven't named it yet. Nothing's coming to mind, so we'll keep thinking up ideas. But for now, slowly getting out of bed. That's the one thing about not having an exact hike plan is that, well, I don't really have to rush anywhere except the woodpeckers are very persistent at making noise so I'm gonna get up in a bit all right so just finished breakfast and I'm cleaning up it's one thing about camping where there are bears and critters who will eat for food is that you have to clean up after every meal so the messes don't build up because packed everything away so that's kind of nice on the other hand they can't really relax after a meal until you've finished cleaning up so <laughs> still really quiet um I think there's actually somebody moving in next to me this afternoon because I see the sign has been flipped to reserved in the plot next door. It's a little nice to have a little bit more sound and lights because last night it was really quiet when I was eating. It wasn't as exciting because it was just, it wasn't scary. It was just like eating in a void. Whereas this morning when I was eating breakfast, it was kind of nice because I actually had things to look at some really beautiful fall foliage higher up the mountain so it's really pretty to see. I really don't see that at sea level I guess where I am at. Um, yeah things turn yellow but not not this nice. I mean I guess it could be nicer and oranger but a lot of it's still green. The thing about washing camp dishes is you're trying to use as little water as possible because you gotta ditch the um, dirty water 
it's going to be heavier. Ooh, I honestly don't know how I'm going to do dishes in the rain. Yeah, I might have to, might have to figure something out for that. I have to move operations closer in one central area where I can avoid rain or just get rained on, I guess. I, I, have, a, I have a rain jacket, so there's that. I can see why some people are just like, eh, throw some dirt on it, rub it, and blow on it. It's like, that'll do. Kind of getting that feeling right now, that'll do. I'm going to see about Jenks Lake. I packed a, like, made a lunch sandwich, so I think I'm going to go to Jenks Lake. Have lunch there, come back, and then maybe head to Big Bear. Alright, so we're doing change of plans. Um, I thought I could hike to Jenks Lake from the Barton Flats campsite, but apparently... It involves like randomly hiking on the road or something. I was very confused about that. And then it might also be like one of the trails actually temporarily closed as well. So uh, I was thinking maybe I should just drive to Jenks Lake and then just hike around the lake. But probably what I'm just going to do is drive to Big Bear Lake and um, see what trails there exist. And then when I wrap up that hike and I'll just be in town to look around and then just drive back. I think that's probably what I'll do. It'll prevent having to drive in opposite directions in one day. And then I'll drive to Jenks Lakes tomorrow and hike around the lake. Yeah, good weather today. It's actually kind of warm, but skies are kind of cloudy, but I don't, it's not supposed to rain today. So I'm going to head out. That's the new plan. All right, so I just went to the Big Bear visitor center that's behind me right there and the lady recommended um, a drive route to get to the Cougar Crest Trail which hooks up with the Pacific Crest Trail um, so I'm gonna at least see a little bit of that I'm not gonna hike too much of it because honestly this is usually not the level of detail of trail map that I like seeing but I did check with her she said from the parking lot up to the Pacific Crest National Trail is about four and a half miles round trip so I think I'll just do that make it like a six mile hike turn around out and back kind of thing that at least give me some hike I don't know how much of the lake I'll actually see but I'll probably see some of the lake in the trail maybe later towards the day I'm gonna see if there's some parking around the lake and I can actually see the lake but I'm sure I'll see some of it when I drive around here so let's go Here, here's where I am, parked here, and then I'm heading towards that way, towards the Pacific Crest Trail. So, here we go. I almost went the wrong way right at the beginning. There's a very nice gentleman sitting at the first fork, and I just ran, decided I was going to head towards the one that was looked more established, and he pointed out, hey, if you're going for the Pacific Crest Trail, it's that way. So, thank you, kind stranger at the beginning of the trail, prevented me from going two and a quarter miles to the wrong trail. So yeah, I think either I am really out of shape from COVID or I am feeling that altitude. I'm already breathing hard, actually already, I was already kind of breathing hard in the car. So, like I said, I'm gonna take it easy for this hike. Might take a walk break. It's been a half a mile and I'm already like wondering why I packed so much stuff. But packed my puffy jacket just in case it got cold because uh, weather looks kind of unpredictable here. And if you know anything about waterfront weather, you can just decide to change his mind anytime. So uh, brought that for warmth just in case. Otherwise, I don't think I'm carrying that much. I've got a full thing of water, some snacks, first aid kit. That's about it. So, I don't know. So I think I'm just suffering because of the altitude combo, just being out of shape generally. So, I'm going to just take my time. That's pretty cool. Looks like it's another area of stone formation. I saw something like this at the uh, Mirror Lake Trail in Yosemite. And it's really cool because you can really see how many people have been here. 
and there's like a nice bench so I'm gonna sit for a second and then maybe build my own. I made a baby one! <laughs> wow, it doesn't look as cool as some of the other ones but it's a thought that counts. I found another seat to sit on on the trail and I sat down and figured out why they put a seat here. That is Big Bear Lake. It's a pretty good view. I am 1.44 miles so I got another mile until I get to the top for well until it meets Pacific Crest Trail because it's not a it's on a summit climb so uh, but it it has been mostly uphill another one of these cool benches overlooking the lake don't mind if I do sit down still hiking down the uh, Canyon Crest Trail 3.57 miles now so I have a mile and a half till I hit the bottom of the trail and I'm kind of losing a bit of sun I know sunsets like it 4.50 ish and I probably don't need to take a break on the way down because it's all very downhill so I think I'll be okay it's just kind of a bummer the set sun setting so early I couldn't actually go a little bit longer that's okay I'm still getting some really nice views of Big Bear Lake and just uh, enjoying being outside there's a couple of other people on the trail I actually probably talked to more people in person today than since a while since it, in the quarantine so it's kind of interesting so I'm super shy so <laughs> I always wait for them to say hi first yeah, making pretty good time it's just some of it's kind of rocky so um, here I'll show you see this some of it's kind of rocky so I can't like speed down the way so um, for that part I gotta go carefully slow but I can actually uh, do a bit of a jog when it's nice and flat and safe or like even slight downhill grade but just not uneven surface with like giant rocks jet, rocks jetting out feeling the altitude a little bit but didn't actually get sick just um, could really tell that I wasn't getting as much oxygen when I breathe so currently still doing well on my way down okay so it is dinner time um, I guess whoever was supposed to be in the spot next to mine didn't show up because I don't see any cars it was bright enough where I could tell like they nobody came even though the sign said reserve so maybe they just changed their minds or something I don't know so once again it is darkness my old friend for dinner well in this case I have three four actually I probably don't need this fourth one three separate light sources to join me for dinner just so I can see everything because as you can see it is pitch black behind there boiling dinner right now on my jet boil there it is but you cannot see anything except that little orange dot right there that is the bathroom had a really fun hike today um, went to Big Bear Lake just to see what there is to see it was I got small mountain town for some reason I thought it would be more like a resort town where you know you'd have all the stuff you'd normally have in a destination kind of like Huntington Beach or you know some other type of Orange County Orange County area situational where you could buy stuff because actually I was really trying to go find a weighted blanket so I could sleep better tonight because I was actually kind of tired from the weird sleep I had last night which was compounded with the um, weird sleep I had the night before that too so uh, but no I couldn't really find a store that sold that type of like home goods the closest thing I, I found was like a hardware store <laughs> that had some home goods and I got myself a fork because I forgot my backpacking fork all I have is my backpacking spoon so it was kind of weird eating eggs this morning yeah no no blankets so but I have a lot of other blankets I think what I'm gonna do is just pile it all on top so it feels like a weighted blanket and then um, hopefully that'll work but making dinner tonight I'm trying beef stroganoff from the brand that I like from last night that's gonna be another five minutes so I hiked the Cougar Crest Trail on North Lake of Big Bear and went all the way up to where it met the Pacific Coast Trail. So that was about a five mile round trip hike. It was really, it was really nice. I got to see some really good views of the Big Bear Lake 
the, the lake is a lot bigger than I thought it was. Like I didn't realize how big the lake was until I got up higher and then I could see it kept going to past where I couldn't really see it. So, so that was a good hike. It was a little hard at the beginning because obviously it was the climbs and the altitude because it started at 7,000 feet and you just kept mostly going up. I don't know what the final elevation was, but I was suffering a little bit at the beginning just because it's been a while since I hiked and also the elevation, but uh, overall it was just nice and it was very quiet as opposed to um, Crystal Cove where you could still, like you could hear the ocean, so that's a noise, and then you can still kind of hear the cars just because you're not more than four miles away from cars anywhere in the park, so you could still hear cars and traffic. Whereas here it was like dead silence except for the critters that live in the mountains. So that was kind of nice just to get away from everything. Although I still had internet access and at some point up, up the climb I got cell phone access. So I think I got like another political ad call. I don't know why I'm getting calls from Texas. But also got some texts from friends so I was able to read that. So not quite a full getaway from the electronics but still pretty fun yeah it was a good hike I probably should have planned it better but it, it you know wasn't really familiar and then I think I drove past a couple of trailheads closer to here as well the Jenks Lakes trail trailhead is apparently at the entrance of this park so I think I'm, I'm gonna hit that up tomorrow uh, and then the Santa Ana River Trail is just a little bit up the road, but I'm not sure what the parking situation is, so I'm going to double check the internet. And I'll probably be able to stay up later to double check the internet because, you know, I feel a lot better today. Yesterday I kind of was walking around with a headache and, you know, the, the lost sleep from the third. But I'm, I'm feeling good. I actually felt better after the hike today. So that that was good. So I think I'm getting used to the altitude packed a sandwich lunch that I, I ate after stopping at the visitor center because I didn't want to stop anywhere for lunch. So we are waiting for dinner too. It's still cooking. It's five, It hasn't been five minutes yet. So I'm probably, probably going to make some more tea and then aside from planning what hike to do tomorrow and making dinner, I'm probably going to end up watching The Mandalorian because <laughs> it's so good and I actually have internet access. I don't know why. Oh, funny story. So I was driving back and then I saw a sign that says like one quarter mile and then it looked like it was like the little Wi-Fi sign with like the wide arc, the little smaller arc, and then the dot. And I was like, wow, Wi-Fi in a quarter mile, like here in the random campgrounds? And then it occurred to me uh, where I was and what I saw this morning, that icon meant amphitheater. <laughs> it's just in, in my context, in my world, it, it's just I see that most frequently come up as Wi-Fi, not amphitheater. But that's what they meant. So I just thought that was funny. All right, here we go. We're going to live taste test the beef stroganoff. I already opened this once to stir it in the middle of the cooking process, and it smells pretty good. So we will see. So it smells pretty good. So don't know what beef stroganoff exactly is aside from just pasta and beef maybe that's just what it is uh, once again I'm gonna pour it out so it's a little easier to eat because that that gets actually quite hot oh oh that's lumpy oh okay okay it looks like it's beef pasta in a creamy sauce that's apparently what beef stroganoff is looks pretty good this is what it looks like it smells pretty good um, actually looks like noodle and meat morsels so fingers crossed let's give it a taste test mm. so like savory creamy meat and noodles kind of the smell kind of reminded me of instant noodles <laughs> but obviously it's a sauce noodle not a not a soup noodle soup so Did not disappoint. I like these pro pack ones. Two for two, which is saying a lot because we went like 0 for 3 last time I was trying like instant food for backpacking. But cleanup's a lot easier because I mean, really, the only thing I have to clean up is the spoon. 
I didn't really need the bowl if I could just, like, if I, if I could have eaten that out of this if I wanted to, but I didn't want to. So, yeah, I would buy again. Okay, I kind of want to try, like, everything else they have, too, because this is, this is good. Smells good, tastes good, hydrated really well. I don't, there's no weird, like, crunchy bits. So the cooking instructions work really well. Um, yeah, would, would eat again and probably want to try more of their stuff, but that is the last pro pack one I have so we're gonna have to try some other stuff tomorrow so day two dinner also a thumbs up all right so after dinner I'm just chilling in my tent for a little bit before I get fully ready for bed so my next door neighbor did move in they came around while I was sitting there eating it was fully dark I didn't expect anyone to plan to get here like in the dark because it's very hard to set up a tent when it's pitch black and then I think I might have more neighbors behind me because I'm hearing noises from over there and kind of over there so it's kind of nice I'm kind of hearing some other activity besides myself but it's still mostly pitch black because no one can have campfires so that's just a, a new way to camp until the fire danger goes down. So right now it's still high, but it is going to rain tomorrow night or Saturday morning or Saturday night. One of those things. And then um, there might be snow on Sunday. So hopefully that fire danger goes down. Uh, obviously, if it's raining, I'm not going to have firewood. But uh, so probably this entire trip, I'm not going to get campfires. I'm hearing like people yelling. I don't think it's my neighbor or the other neighbor. It just sounds like there's yelling coming from the road. I'm a little bit afraid to go outside, but at some point I gotta go to the bathroom, so I'm afraid to check the news, honestly. <laughs> like, what's with all the yelling? Oh, I should probably go check the news. All right. All right, so we just got an email that um, there's gonna be the snow advisory starting earlier than I thought. So it will be snowing starting Friday night, apparently. Tomorrow night. So here's the thing. If it's snowing, there's not a whole heck of a lot I can do here. The hiking's going to be a lot harder with snow. I probably shouldn't be driving anywhere because those roads are hard enough to drive clean when the visibility is great like it gets a little harder when visibility is not so great like in the dark but I have never driven in snow before originally I thought this was gonna be rain on Saturday and then snow on Sunday so I thought maybe if I just left in the middle of the day when it was gonna be warmer like when it was when it's over 30 something degrees that I would be fine it wouldn't be snowing but now they're saying that the system's gonna roll in Friday night right now I'm at 6,000 something feet so they're saying that it's gonna be three to eight inches of snow I don't know how to deal with any snow three to eight inches of snow sounds like a lot the campgrounds also sent out an email saying that hey past November you're required to carry chains so good thing I, I did pick up some chains or cables for my tires before I came on this trip. But this is completely avoidable. Again, if it starts snowing, I'm not going to be able to do anything anyways. It'll be just like a whole Saturday of me hanging out buried in snow. I don't know what the tent feels like when it's snowing. And originally it was supposed to snow on Sunday. And so I, I'm... You know, I might have to break down camp in the snow, but I'm not going to have to, like, stay overnight in a tent in snow. I have layers and layers of blankets and a jacket I can put on. I don't know. I, I'm really debating whether or not I should just leave tomorrow. I'd lose two days worth of the fees for the camp, but that's okay. That's, like, 60-something dollars, you know, rather than all the potential problems I can get to with snow. I mean, I could still have like a, like a fun weekend out of it at home. Uh, you know, I drive back tomorrow Friday and then I still have Saturday, Sunday and Monday. So 
I'm really tempted. I don't want to be like a quitter, but logistically, there's like nothing I can do. I'm so close to home. I could just drive home. I'm not losing that much money. And actually, I'd probably be saving money because if I don't have to break out the cables, I can go return them for $80. So it's like I make $20. <laughs> I think I'm gonna go home tomorrow. Oh, which is kind of a bummer because really was looking forward to like a longer trip and I had all this stuff packed and planned, but it's just the winter rolled in a weekend too early and I'm gonna have to poop out. I think oh. I'm gonna sleep on it and I'm gonna think about it tomorrow. Yeah, I'm kinda bummed out. Oh, Good morning from Barton Flats. Super peaceful this morning. Weather looks great. It might be like a little bit overcast. Um, there's one of the blocked fire pits. But this is actually really nice fall weather for hiking. Not, not hot. Not too cold. Uh, weather looking like it's going to hold up for a good solid couple of hours. So, it, so I thought about the plan for the rest of the camping trip, and I talked to talked to my friends about it, because I felt really bad about cutting the camping trip short, and it's supposed to be like my first solo camping trip, but I've come to the conclusion after sleeping on it, it's probably the best for me to pack out today instead of wait till the storm coming in and the reason for that is that it a hundred percent consensus from everybody that if i can avoid driving on the mountains in snow i should avoid driving the mountains in the snow and here i know exactly when the storm's rolling in and there's no reason i have to stay and if i do stay it's probably not going to be a very enjoyable trip like i can't actually do anything um i don't have snow trekking gear probably what i'll do instead since the weather's going to hold up for most of today is that uh, i'm going to do a morning hike and um, go maybe go to jenks lake and just take a look at that and then plan to pack out early afternoon before the sun sets so probably start breaking camp two three o'clock that way um i can do everything before the storm comes in everything stays dry and i can still get down the mountain before the storm comes in i thought about like maybe just sticking around so i can enjoy the snow happening the problem is it's not just snow it's a snowstorm and they're saying it's 40 to 50 miles per hour wind gusts. Um, I still have all this food packed. But push comes to shove, I'm just going to have a picnic in my backyard or something. Um, at least then I'll know I'll be safe getting off the mountains and my friends won't have to worry. It's breakfast time. I just made some eggs and a piece of sausage and some chipotle mayo. Still planning on doing the hike this morning to Jenks Lake. And I, there's kind of no other major hikes I'm going to have to look at. And as far as a recon trip for like a later camping trip, this was pretty successful. Like saw the town, knew where the supplies were, got an idea of what the facilities look like. So... So that's good. I'm looking forward to coming back even though I have to leave early this trip. Um, next time maybe I'll just come earlier in the fall before the snow hits. Um, or maybe maybe even in the summer, you know, we could do some of the water activities. It's still pretty quiet. There's more 
more people at the campsite definitely now i think people want it like one last weekend because it, it is friday today so if people are trying to make a three-day weekend out of it i don't know who's actually staying there's a bunch of rvs so they'll probably be fine just to sit through it assuming they're not leaving on a day where there is snow but for me it's gonna be a little harder so i think going home is the right choice i'm gonna try to call them at eight see if i can change my reservation so i'm leaving tomorrow instead again not gonna change my mind like i'm still gonna leave today i should know i'll take the 33 dollars back and they'll give it to me either way i think overall it's been a good trip it's a nice change of pace from being at home most of the day or just uh, ice skating at home it's just something new yeah overall i really like these campgrounds it's not as like organized of a camping area as yosemite and i think yosemite is just different compared to everything else right I, I said it's kind of the disneyland of camp sites here it's a it's a, um, a bunch of separate campsites there's some private lodges towards big bear and then there's like private or other campsites run uh, also that's part of uh, the same forest service that's run by a management company so i'm thinking the amenities are probably the same i didn't get a chance to check out any of them just because a lot of the other national forest service campsites around here are actually closed like the gates are shut there's a plastic thing over the sign to protect it like they're closed for the season or you know closed early probably because of covid or maybe just they're higher elevation so they were expecting bad weather earlier but i i like it it's um it's clean the granted the food lockers are a little small but Nothing you can't plan for. Like, you know, again, I probably overgamed <laughs> for a camping trip. And you can always just go into town for supplies. It's about a half hour away, or there's a general convenience store that's got a lot of the staples like ice that's closer, probably like 15 minutes away, six miles down the hill. But it is mountain road. So, yeah, overall, I think it's pretty good site for just enjoying the woods. There's not as many trails as I'd hope. Or maybe, you know, I just haven't found them properly. But they're not, like, a little harder to find. Instead of having everything organized and there's a map where you can tell exactly where all the trails are, I kind of had to figure that out on my own. Like, yesterday, I didn't even know where I was going to go hike. I just drove to Big Bear. They had a visitor center. I went in there and asked them. Got, a, got like, a really simplified map of where the trail started got a little bit more information from the guide before i went there because you know you you want to know you want to be prepared the map was so generic it didn't even tell me how long the trail was yeah it was a little difficult finding out like where the hike exactly started i had that guidebook but i didn't really get a great chance to read it and a lot of it is like here are the coordinates for where the trailhead it is I'm like it's not gonna help me like i'm i like hiking and all but it, it's it's a little bit hard to find unless you have it all mapped out first. So if you want to come here, make sure you prepare, know exactly where your trailheads are, what the parking situation is like, because it's not as much on the fly. Like that's very difficult to figure out on the fly with the exception of one or two trails. Whereas if you went to Yosemite, you're just like, oh, oh, there's a trail on the giant map and they have multiple maps, multiple signs telling you exactly where the trails are, which is kind of how some people get in trouble, I guess, because some of these trails, those trails over there are pretty strenuous. So yeah, if you just want to like chillax, no problem. If you want to do some hikes, you got to do some homework first to figure out where you're going to go hike. Otherwise, I really like this campsite. I'm sorry the trip had to end early, but I'm going to finish up breakfast, get dressed and start my hike to Jenks Lake. lazy can't move Ugh. sort of packing a little bit still gotta go do the hike at Jinx Lake be nice to see the lake it's just the calm before the storm it's so nice and quiet I just want to lie here but gotta pack well I gotta go do the hike and then finish packing been packing as I've been getting ready just it's so comfy, but it's not going to be comfy tonight, so I'm going to keep packing. Right. Jenks Lake Trail. Let's go. Alright, I'm on the Jenks Lake Trail. 
and this is currently already feeling better than yesterday because a um, couple hundred feet elevation lower than the start of yesterday's hike and also it's flat. Um, it's a pretty nice day to get today. Like the skies are blue. There's some clouds, but if I didn't see the weather forecast, I wouldn't believe you that there's a snowstorm rolling in. So I'm in short sleeves right now. Um, We'll walk past the campsite. Jinx Lake Trail started at the beginning, the entrance of the campsite, so I had to actually walk my way almost to the exit of the campsite. And uh, then there was a sign that says Trail Jinx Lake, so this must be it. It's matching the description of what it says in the book. You start off parallel to Highway 38. That's the road that I drove in. You can kind of probably see some cars in the background as well. Um, it was like nobody on the trail definitely more people in the campsite that i see now um uh hope everybody's gonna be okay during the snowstorm not specifically worried about the people in the rvs a little bit worried about the people in the tents but uh i'm assuming if they're gonna stay they know what they're doing So I came across this graffiti on this, I guess it used to be an informational plaque. I don't actually know what this means, but it's a very nice drawing. Okay. All right. Keep going. All right. Finally found it. Oh, that was kind of scary. I had to cross this road. Uh, I was kind of confused, but it looks like this is the, this is the trail. So here we go. All right, so that was seven tenths of a mile just to get to the trail uh, from the campsite. And it's kind of, it's getting pretty windy right now. Weather's still good. Why is there a fork in the trail? Uh, I think this is probably the right way. I shouldn't be doing a significant amount of climbing. Actually, I'm not sure. Once again, I didn't check elevation maps. I probably should have. Dang it. Uh, but looks like I'm actually on the Jenks Lake Trail now, not just a trail that leads to the Jenks Lake Trail. So looking forward to getting there. I packed a sandwich, so that's going to be lunch. Um, yeah, keep going. Oh, looks like it's kind of uphill a little bit. Just to turn it around and show you. A little bit of a climb. Not awful, but definitely still a climb. So keep going. All right, so it looks like this is going to be a quote unquote river forge. Well, I mean, it's actually a river, but um, we got to cross it to get to the trail, I think, because this just sort of ends. There's a stick over there. I'm actually not sure which way is the trail now. I mean, it looks. It looks like this sort of is a trail. Looks like there's a dry path to get to the other side, so let's go check it out. Maybe that wooden sign will have some information. Oh, look, actual water. You know, I actually did bring my water filter to try. Oh boy. Oh boy. Okay, got it. Okay, yes. All right. Uh... Well, that didn't help. <laughs> okay, I thought maybe there'd be some words on here. Okay, I don't think this is the trail. Probably it's on the other side. Okay, so this looks like this was another trail that led to this stick that tells me nothing. Executive decision, we're going back that way. Okay, let's go. I mean, yeah, should be fine, I think. I mean, that sort of looks more like a trail on the other side. At least it's wide, right? It's just this was kind of discouraging, but 
That sort of looks like a trail. Let's go. Ugh. Okay. Uh, huh. Well, I'm so confused. Ah, <laughs> uh, no. There's a bunch of bamboo, but that sort of looks like a trail over there. I'm still heading in the right direction, as long as I'm following the river. Oh boy. Uh, this is certainly not I mean it's the old, closest thing to here that looks like a trail unless I was supposed to go back that way is there a switchback let me consult the maps all right we're turning back um so I went and looked at the uh guidebook again and it says you cross the river and then there are some switchbacks so looks like that other trail is the actual trail for Jenks Lake. So that's part of the switchback. So heading back over to the river to cross it because uh, that stopped stopped looking like a trail. <laughs> really should have markers. But, well, they should have markers, but probably I should have just known better than to uh, get into that thing because that is clearly not a trail including where I'm walking now. Still not a trail. Oh my god. So I'm just trying to come back out from the not trail part. <laughs> Whew, okay. All right. That was kind of rough. Uh, back to crossing the river. And uh, so yeah, I crossed that river. That's the switchback. All right, let's go. Okay, so here I am in a triple fork. Uh, behind me is the trail I came on, and then that looks like it's a trail. But then here it says trail, and a very helpful person put down to Jenks. Not gonna lie, if I had some markers and some tools, I'd probably add something to that wooden sign back there that we saw. And just say, like, that's this is the way to Jenks Trail. Don't try to go into the woods randomly, because that's what I almost did. Um, this makes sense. This is consistent with the uh, article about the switchbacks. Certainly is switchbacky. So I'm gonna keep going. But a little bit more certain now this is the correct way. <laughs> okay. Has a pretty uh, pretty good creepy arch. I like it. I'm gonna take some reference photos. All right. Weird. I just left the boat here, but okay. Uh, so this is Jenks Lake. We've got the Jenks Lake day use area. Right now there's nobody. 
probably what I'm going to do is uh, walk around the lake. And then I'll sit down and eat lunch and then I'll head back. wish there was like more unobstructed view but I don't know if it's safe to walk down there uh, maybe just try it for a bit nah I'm good <laughs> so stick to this nice trail over here nice safe okay that looks like a pretty good stretch let's take let's, let's take a go okay that's pretty photos here. Very nice, very nice. So apparently this is a man-made lake for fishing. It's not that big. There are two people fishing on the little pier output over there which you can see sort of see over there so that's the end of one one end here's the middle there's the other end so it's a very short walk around the lake according to the hiking guide point seven miles uh, number of picnic tables around the area Another person's fishing over there. I'm gonna hop back on the trail because it looks like it gets a little bit more narrow here. Oh, that's a good, that's a good bench. That's pretty. It's nice and quiet. to the stream. Yep. This is as good as a place as any to stop for some lunch because I am getting a little bit hungry. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, Um, so it is the temperature drop the wind picked up and now the wind chill factor has made the temperature drop so I was originally in a short sleeve shirt and now I've put on my puffy jacket which I originally wasn't even gonna pack for the hike but turns out it's it's really good right now because it's comfortable and it this puffy jacket's just been the MVP of this trip because it's got just the right amount of warmth without being too bulky Whereas the other full-on Fjordraven jacket, yes, way warmer, but also very heavy and very bulky and kind of gets in the way when you're trying to do anything like wash your face or brush your teeth, whereas this one's more, it just feels like a really warm sweatshirt. So also it's, it's a very lovely color. Uh, I hope it does wash okay though, because I did get some stains on it. 
you know, camping. Dirty. Just going to sit here and relax for a couple more minutes before I start the hike back. It's probably a two mile hike all the way back to the tent and then I'm going to pack up the car and according to the National Forest Service Reservation.com lady, uh, when I'm ready to head out, then I should try to call them to cancel the remainder of my trip and see if I'm eligible for any refunds. So it was a relatively quick call. I called them this morning and asked them if I canceled it, can I get my last night's money back? Because I, I didn't make, I was I knew I was going to make checkout time today and I didn't want to because I wanted to kind of enjoy this last hike and so I wasn't going to be able to pack out at 12. So um, I only wanted my Saturday night to Sunday that part refunded. So uh, she called me, she told me in that when I'm ready to leave, that's when I should call them. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, just going to enjoy the view for a little bit. But there's some, let me show you here, some ominous clouds right there. That is a very definitive cutoff for that cloud. So that might be the snow for a very cool picture, but knowing what's coming, yeah, I think I'm going to call it here and just start hiking back because uh, <laughs> I don't want to get involved in whatever that is. Okay. All right, so the this side of the quote-unquote lake trail, definitely less of a trail. It's basically like a scramble at some point. This is the nicer looking part. There are some parts where it was like, is this a trail? I'm not sure. But at this point, I think I can just forage through the forest no matter what and get to the other side of the lake. I just uh, got back from my Jenks Lake hike. I'm just going to sit in my tent and uh, finish up packing and then call the uh, reservation.com people to let them know that I'm leaving early and see if they'll give me some money back. <sighs> Wish I could stay another day just hanging out. Look at that entire container of art supplies and books I didn't touch at all. The only thing in there I touched was the Nintendo Switch battery, which I'm using to power my cell phone. <laughs> so good job, over overpacking Joyce. Good job. <laughs> all right, just going to keep packing. Well, that's final walk through. Make sure I didn't leave anything. Uh, it's been a great three days. Actually, two days? Like on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's two and a half days. Great two and a half days. Uh, yeah, but gotta go because I don't want to ride through the storm I just kind of try to pack everything up as, soon, as fast as I could um, I know I have to clean everything up anyway when I get home like the tent so I just kind of like didn't bother trying to fold it really nicely and just it rolled it into the bag but now everything's packed um, yeah I'm gonna go ahead and call the uh, recreation.gov site now to see if I can get a refund on that last night, tomorrow night, that I won't be here for. And um, we'll see, we'll also try to see if I can do it on the website because she said I could, but I didn't think I could. So I'll probably just call them. <laughs> All right, bye. Well, I am back from the camping trip. And at the end of every camping trip, laundry, laundry marathon. Toasty, but also hungry. It's not even seven yet. And I want to stay in here because it's warm and nice. But the food's outside. So. Uh, there's also coffee outside. Oh, man. I'll go back to bed. Maybe if I fall asleep, I won't be hungry.